Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is another motion quick tip. I thought I'd stick with text effects because there's all sorts of interesting things that you can do there. If you haven't seen it already, you can check out my last tutorial on animating text that draws on the page. This time, however, I thought it'd be fun to create a text explosion like you might see in a title sequence. Here's basically what it'll look like when we're done. Okay, I'm going to start by selecting the title tool and typing your title in the canvas. Now obviously you can type your title or your title, whichever you prefer. Make sure though that it's in all caps. It's going to look better in the overall effect. Hit escape when you're finished and choose a font. Now you can use any font that you like, but the effect is going to work best with thicker fonts. So I'm going to make mine Arial Black. Use the size slider in the inspector to make it bigger and then click on the layout button and choose center for the alignment. If you have snapping turned on, you can center the text pretty easily. If it's off, hit N on the keyboard to activate it. Now that my text is where I want it, I'm going to label my group text. Then create a new group above it and call this one Spark. This is where I'll create the particle for my explosion. You'll see why I'm creating a dedicated group for this in a minute. With the Spark group selected, select the circle tool from the toolbar or just hit C on the keyboard. Draw a small circle, but you don't need to make it really small since you'll be able to scale it down later to taste. But hold down the shift key when you draw to ensure that it is a perfect circle. In the properties tab, click this little curved arrow to adjust the circle's position to the middle of the canvas. I want this circle to have a glow-like feel, so I'm going to show you a trick that you can use to get it by cloning the circle. With the circle selected, hit K on the keyboard to clone it. Then move it to the side a bit so that it's side by side with the original. Cloning a layer has some distinct advantages over simply duplicating it. A duplicate is an exact but independent copy of the original. A clone is also a copy, but it maintains some of the properties of the original even if those properties change at a later time. I'll show you what I mean. If I go to the Properties tab in the Inspector and scale the original circle up or down, the clone remains the same size. However, if I decide to feather the shape of the original by going to the Shape tab, notice how the clone starts to feather as well. Give your circle a pretty heavy feather. Then change the color of the original from the default white to like a blue and note how when I do that the clone is changing with it. This kind of mimicry can be very helpful when you're designing templates. Okay, to create the glow that I talked about, we need both circles on top of each other. Select the clone and click on the properties tab. Then click the little curved arrow so that it resets the parameter to zero. Then go a little further down and change its blend mode to add. Now the colors of the two circles are added together to get a sort of white with a bluish glow on it. If the glow doesn't look bright enough for you, just select the original layer and change the color until you get something that you like. Since we cloned our copy instead of duplicating it, the clone's going to change to the same color as the original and you'll be able to add those colors together to get the glow that you want. Once you have the color you want, select the entire spark group and click the Make Particles button on the toolbar to create an emitter for your spark. Label the group that's created Explosion. Now I want this to explode outward in 3D, so I really need to make this a 3D project. I can do this pretty easily by just adding a camera. Click on the New Camera button on the toolbar to add a camera. You should get a dialog box asking whether you want to change the existing groups to 3D groups. Click the Switch to 3D button, and now all the groups are 3D, as indicated by these little icons up here. If I click on the icon, it'll toggle the group back to 2D, but we don't want that, so just leave them all as 3D. Okay, select the emitter. In the Emitter tab of the Inspector, click the 3D button so that the emitter is also 3D. This is an important step, since the particles won't fly around in 3D space without it. 
Then click the Shape drop-down. These are the possible shapes that your emitter can take. Choose Image from the menu. This will allow us to use another layer as the basis for the emitter shape. Since we want our emitter to be in the shape of our title, drag the title layer into the image well like so. Okay, hit play on the keyboard and see what it looks like. All right, it's uh, pretty underwhelming at this point, but with a few quick changes, we can fix that. Hit stop and go back to the beginning of your project. First, change the arrangement of the emitter from tile view to random. Go down to the cell controls and make the birth rate zero. We want zero because we don't want any new particles being created aside from the initial number. Speaking of initial number, crank that number up until the particles fill the entire shape. Chances are it'll look like a cloudy mess like mine does, but you can fix that by scrolling down to the bottom of the emitter tab to find the scale property. Scale the particles down until you get a size that looks good. The smaller you make them, the more particles you're going to need to fill up the shape, but the overall effect will look a little more brilliant. Once you've scaled it down, you're going to need to crank up the initial number again to fill the shape, but it should now start looking like your title. Now we used an additive blend on the circles to help them achieve a glow look. Let's do it again with the particles. Click the additive blend button. Since so many of the circles overlap one another, the resulting color will be close to white with maybe some blue around the edges. Okay, a couple more changes in the emitter. Right now, all of the particles live for 5 seconds. This is far too long for an explosion, so change that number to 2. Also, I don't want the particles to disappear at the same time, so make the life randomness 3. And then also change the speed of the particles to 0. Finally, I don't want the particles to just blink off when they die. They should sort of fade like an ember that's gotten cold. To do this, twirl open the opacity over life parameter right here below the color mode. The white bar means that each particle is born and dies at full opacity. Click inside the white bar to create a new opacity tag and then adjust the opacity to zero and make sure that it's on the far end of the bar. Now, a particle is full opacity at the beginning of life, but slowly fades away as it dies. Okay, time to animate the particles. Make sure that the emitter is selected and go to Add Behaviors, Simulations, Random Motion. Create a short play range, only about a few seconds long. Just drag your playhead to about the three second mark or so and hit Command Option O to set the end of the play range then hit play to see how it looks. Now depending on your system and how many particles you've set as your initial number, you may or may not be able to see the movement in real time speed. You can tell by looking up here in the upper left hand side of the canvas what the current frame rate is. If you don't see it, right click the area and make sure that frame rate is checked. It's important for this part of the project to be able to judge things in real time, so let's give the computer a bit of a break and lower the number of particles for the time being. We can always crank it up again later, just before the end. Now the animation is playing at full speed, but it's obvious to me that there's not nearly enough movement there for an explosion. With the emitters selected, go to the Behaviors tab to find the parameters for the random motion behavior. Okay, first of all, make sure that the Z position is selected. After all, we want the particles to explode in Z space towards the camera. Then, increase the amount to about 250 so that we get a lot more movement. Okay, this is good, but if you look carefully, you can see that the particles seem to periodically change direction. This is a function of the frequency parameter. Larger numbers mean that the particles will often change directions. Smaller numbers mean that they will change less. So bring the frequency down uh, to about here. Also, change the noisiness down to zero so that the movement of the particles is smooth. The animation is starting to look pretty good, but there are a few things that we can do to enhance it. Let's take a look at this animation from a different perspective. Go to the camera view button 
and choose Perspective from the menu. Now you can see your animation as well as the camera that you added. Use the View tools in the upper right hand corner here to view the scene from an angle. You may need to back the view up to see both the camera and the particles. If that's the case, click on the Walk Camera tool here in the toolbar. Now you can back up from the scene by simply hitting the down arrow key on the keyboard and still use the Orbit tool to spin your view around. Basically, I want to view this scene from above and uh, to the side. As you watch the particles move, you can see that they move fairly evenly towards the camera as well as away from the camera. What I want is to have the particles fly mostly towards the camera so the text is like blowing outwards from the center. In part two of this tutorial, we'll add some extra animation to really sell the explosion and then marry it to our original text to create a seamless effect.